Since the beginning of the English occupation of Ireland in 1534, a select group of Irish individuals have viewed the English as trying to obliterate the nation of Ireland, both economically and culturally. By the outbreak of 1914, tensions had reached a new high, and in 1916, the IRB, a part of the Irish Volunteers, led by James Connolly, marshaled an uprising that would be known as the Easter Rising. While the uprising was destined to fail, these men were ready to die for their cause in order to inspire the Irish people to fight their independence. In 1801, Ireland became part of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, allowing full English control over the country. This led to resistance among the Irish, with the idea of Home Rule being voiced by Isaac Butt in the 1870s. Home Rule would allow Ireland to remain part of the United Kingdom, but allow some self-governance with the idea gaining much support from the Irish people. Anti-British sentiment was further compounded in the late 1800s with a revival of Gaelic culture, shown in the establishment of the Gaelic Athletic Association in 1884. The Home Rule movement gained popularity amongst the Irish people with the Irish Volunteers being formed after the Dublin lockout in 1913 to push for Home Rule. Before a Home Rule Act could be passed though, in 1914, the outbreak of World War I led to its postponement, with 120,000 of the Irish Volunteers going to support the British war effort. There was however opposition to the Home Rule by some Irish Republicans who demanded full Irish independence with many joining the IRB. They saw World War I as an opportunity to lead an uprising in Ireland while the bulk of British forces were overseas. The IRB, along with 10,000 remaining Irish volunteers, began planning a rebellion during World War I. Their main issue, however, was a lack of arms, which they hoped to deal with by the Germans sending them weapons and supplies. The capturing of the German supply ship by British intelligence on the 21st of April 1916, however, destroyed any chances of a rebel victory. Nonetheless, on the Easter Monday on the 24th of April 1916, at noon, the uprisings began. Due to Owen McNeill's countermanding order, however, only 1,600 rebels showed up. The rebels were initially successful in capturing the designated sites which would act as forming the defensive arcs. The general post office, which would serve as headquarters, was captured where the proclamation of the Irish Republic was read out. However, the inability to capture Dublin Castle, the ports, or the train station meant that British reinforcements could arrive. By Thursday, there were over 16,000 British soldiers with martial law declared, and while early trench tactics failed, they eventually switched to artillery, bringing the gunship, the Helga, up the river, which bombarded rebel positions. This proved successful, as it forced the evacuation of the General Post Office on Friday, and with the rebels completely surrounded, outmanned and outgunned, Patrick Pearce surrendered on Sunday the 26th. Ultimately, whilst the risings had very minimal immediate effect, with subsequent little physical effect on Dublin, the shocking psychological implications were essential in catalyzing the nationalistic ideals within the population. Within a few days of the surrender, on the 29th of April, all the important members of the IRB had been rounded up and jailed. The Irish volunteers who had participated were disarmed and sent home, and life seemed to continue in Dublin as if nothing had changed. The Irish people were angry with the rebels, with many Dubliners loudly shouting that they should be shot. Only three days after the surrender, the executions and the hasty trials began. 77 death sentences were handed down, many convicted on weak or irrelevant evidence. While certainly 15 executions were carried out, the brutal treatment of the leaders of the Rising caused many to reassess their views. As Patrick Pierce predicted, the leaders of the Rising had made the sacrifices necessary to mobilize the Irish people and made them realize the strength of their own nationhood. Whilst the realisation was not immediate, and in the short term not particularly passionate, there was a catalyst that led to independence. The people of Ireland, with a newfound nationalistic attitude, established the goal to defeat the British in Parliament, replacing the Irish supporters of Home Rule with Republicans. The leaders of the Easter Risings, who were executed, were constantly portrayed as patriots, who had been murdered for their heroic service to Ireland in election propaganda. Fulfilling the vision, Patrick Pearce, originally had to mobilize a united Ireland. The leaders of the Easter Risings had a vision to change the nation of Ireland and liberate the people from the oppression of the British. A vision that was realized six years later. A vision that has changed the global political landscape.